Hey everyone, hope you are doing very well and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about Castle Creations electronic speed controls. Brand new speed controls coming to the market using a familiar name and I believe these speed controls are going to be very good. Now let's get in and discuss exactly why. Before we get into it, I do want to thank the patrons of this channel. I have a new V2 Limitless as well as I'm shipping out the Castle XLX2 that got damaged in that speed run that I made with the Limitless V2 and everything pretty well got total. So I got parts that are going to be coming and I'm going to have a new Castle XLX2 coming as well. It's going to take some time but it will be on the channel and hopefully ready by either the end of the season or beginning of next season. Thanks a lot for all of you that help make these videos as well as all the videos that are done on this channel possible. For transparency, I do want to state that most of my radio control vehicles do use Castle Creations ESCs, and that is because of a couple different things. If you're anything like me and you love speed, this is what Castle Creations ESCs have allowed me to achieve. And then the second item is this channel is all about reliability, and this is how I'm able to make my systems very reliable for the amount of performance and how hard I'm pushing these ESCs. This is just what I have found within my own experience. However, that was not always the case. Back in the day when I raced radio control boats, this is probably around 2007 to nine, I used Castle Hydra 120 amp ESCs as well as the Castle Hydra 240 amp ESC. And I had a bunch of trouble when I was blowing these ESCs up quite easily. This is also knowing that I was not pulling anywhere near the maximum amount of continuous current from these ESCs as I was data logging all of my runs. And that's where we arrive here today. Let's take a look on the website what Castle Creations is currently offering for radio controlled boat ESCs. Just on the Castle website here, we can see two versions of the Hydra that are available. On the right hand side, we got the Hydra X. This is an 8S ESC. And then on the left hand side, we got the Hydra XLX2 ESC, also good for 8S. But what is most important about these letters here is that we should recognize these because this ESC has been around in the car world for quite some time. And this is probably one of the biggest things for this speed control. It has proven itself extremely reliable for the amount of power and how hard people are pushing this ESE. You're gonna see just a very small taste of what this looks like here in a data log that we'll look at very shortly. So within the Hydra XLX2, we can see a bunch of verbiage that Castle ends up placing here. We're gonna go through a couple bits of this and then we're going to take a look at some specifications because they identify the current capabilities of this ESC. So we'll take a look at that here very shortly. But first, Castle is excited to return to the boat market after a decade-long hiatus. This is because they had significant issues with the Hydra version that sold over a decade ago. And it was probably because of issues that we'll get into here very shortly. We are pleased to present the Hydra XLX2. Now I'm going to skip down to where it says no. Due to the high power nature of the Hydra, you must use appropriately sized components. We recommend a minimum of 150 amp connector for this ESC. Examples include, and they provide all of those connector components. So what's really interesting is that they are stating this, and I do believe this is one of the biggest issues that the old Hydra had. The old Hydra was good for 240 amps continuous. Even though I didn't pull anywhere near that amount of power, we still, or I still had issues along with many other people, and I believe it was because of ripple voltage. And we'll see what ripple voltage looks like with the XLX2. So now skipping down below, we're gonna go straight to those specifications. And it does say that the continuous current rating is 180 amps. This is unique for Castle Creations ESCs because generally for the car ESCs, they do not list it. And we're gonna see a note about this here below. And we have the burst current rating noted as 350 amps. And then it also says, see note below, it's got the asterisk. So let's jump below and take a look at what they're stating here. The note is RC Hobby current rating. Castle does not generally publish amperage ratings for service ESEs. We recognize this, this is true. We have a video actually on this exact very thing. There is no standardization 
in the industry for testing and rating ESE current capabilities. Castle's testing methods tend to result in a much lower number than the competitors, and we feel our numbers better represent the product's actual capabilities. I really like this. This is transparency, and it's almost like a guarantee that they're being conservative. They're being conservative so that we can get the reliability when we purchase these ESEs. But due to the difference in testing and rating methods, our SEs can look weaker in comparison to our competitors. And they want us to keep that in mind. I want to also take a look at how they actually rate their ESEs because a lot of manufacturers don't actually do this. And this would be significantly helpful if more manufacturers would do this. Better yet, I would even challenge that the battery companies should do this exact test and make it very apparent and clear to all of us here when we are buying a 100,000 C rated battery. So the continuous current rating is for five minutes with proper cooling, adequate connectors, and batteries. Using improperly sized components can lead to ESC stress and failure that is not covered by warranty. And this is important because if you do use improperly sized components such as batteries that cannot dump anywhere near the 180 amp rating of this ESC, and you're pulling that kind of power, you are going to cause stress on the ESC because of ripple voltage. And it goes on to say that the burst rating is for short momentary periods lasting no more than two seconds. This is really important because a lot of guys ask, well, what is the burst current of my specific components, whether it's a battery or it's an ESC or it's a motor. And the burst current ultimately depends on the timing. Castle Creations gives you that. So you now know that if you're gonna be pulling that current rating of 350 amps for two seconds, that that's the limit. Anything more and you are exceeding that limit. Now that we've seen this, I want to switch over to this Castle Creations data log. I made this quite a while ago, um, uh, several years ago. This was my very first run with the XLX2 on 8S. This is definitely not the highest out there in terms of the amount of power that you can pull from this. We've pulled a significant more amount of current from the Castle XLX2 on the channel, but I want to show what's going on with this system. So we have a pass here where we are pulling upwards of 306 amps. Now this is definitely a burst and it's a burst that does not last a long time. Now what you can see is that the voltage of the battery here is dropping significantly all the way to the cutoff that is programmed within this speed control. And you can also see as we go and increase in time here we get to the point where our power output is 100% which is represented in this general area. And as you approach this what you're going to find is that the ripple voltage, the purple line that I'm currently following, is going to be the highest before we get to 100% throttle for any duration of time. In fact, once we are at that 100% throttle in the middle here, you're going to see that you're going to experience a low amount of ripple voltage. We have a peak ripple voltage where we're pulling 132 amps and that ripple voltage is 1.30 volts. So 1.30 volts. This is interesting. I'm going to bring a calculator into this as well. Why don't we go the whole nine yards here and enter in these values. So we just saw a ripple voltage of 1.3 and now we need to divide that by the nominal voltage of our battery pack. We are doing this because we want to see is our speed control at risk of failure. We use the nominal voltage of the cell of our lithium polymer battery pack. That's 3.7 volts per cell. We multiply that by eight cells and then we are dividing our initial ripple voltage by this 29.6 volt nominal. And we're gonna get a percentage of 4.4%. Now 4.4%, it is a decent amount of ripple voltage. However, it is lower than 5%. If your system is hitting less than 5% ripple, that is going to be okay. Once you get over the 5% mark, then you should start to consider using a cap pack to control the amount of ripple voltage that you are seeing within your system. In addition to this, if you are seeing over 10%, this is a problem. You definitely are putting your speed control at risk and you should do something about it immediately. What we're saying here is that the ripple voltage that we've calculated at 4.4% is actually very good considering even the battery that we're using. This battery pack is old, it's tired, it is definitely not performing and within one of the first couple passes here, it is dropping to that voltage cutoff. You can see here the difference between our max 
in our min values, 31.7 volt max just in the window that you see here. And we're dropping all the way to 25.4 volts, a significant amount of voltage drop for around the 300 amp mark. What this tells us is that somewhere inside this Castle Creations ESC connected with the main input battery leads is some significant amounts of ripple voltage suppression. However, you still need to make sure that you're sizing things correctly as Castle points out and make sure that you are monitoring the total amount of ripple voltage that is occurring within all of your runs so that you can make certain that you are not exceeding any type of limitation there as well. This Castle Creations ESE definitely has some high expectations from me. I expect to see lots of guys using them in your standard and typical type of installations. And I would expect to also see guys who are using them in their speed run vehicles, otherwise known as SAW, your saw type runs out there in boats. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.